notes are about how we might fit an exponential function to a table, a given table of values. Um, we have hopefully seen in class at this point how we might recognize a table of values such as one to the left, to this left table right here. So we have 3, 6, 12, 24 as our outputs. Hopefully you've noticed that to get from one to the next in each of these cases, we're doubling. We're multiplying by two, multiplying by two, multiplying by two. And we've recognized that that's telling us some sort of exponential function with a b value or a growth factor of two, something like two to the x. But this function isn't just two to the x, because if I plug in, let's say, zero, I'm not getting two to the zero. I'm not getting one as an output. I'm getting three. So in each case, when I take 2 and raise it to the power of our input, I also have to multiply by 3 for this pattern. And that's an exponential uh, function that's not that bad to recognize. We first had to recognize that we're doubling, we then had to realize that it's exponential, recognize our b value is 2, and then figure out that our a value was 1, just almost just by inspection. But let's take a look at the table to the right. If I kind of look at what are we multiplying by, they don't seem to be, be very nice numbers. 8 times what is 11? I mean, 11 eighths, and then 11 times 11 seven, uh, 17 elevenths is giving us 17. So it's not as nice a pattern as we can see in the table to the left. Let's see what we might be able to figure out, though. If I do look at differences, so not what I'm multiplying by, but what I'm adding each time, looks like we're adding 3, then we're adding 6, and then we're adding 12. And what we're adding, our differences are definitely representing some sort of pattern. Our differences are doubling each time. So what is that telling us? How do we fit a function, um, an exponential function, to that pattern? Um, what this function actually is, is 3 times 2 to the x plus 5. You might have realized that if you take our old outputs from our left-hand table and add 5, we're getting our right-hand table out. 6 plus 5 is 11. 24 plus 5 is 29. So we're taking our old outputs and just adding 5 onto it. But notice within that table, that kind of messed up our pattern. We weren't just doubling each time. We were, however, adding something, and what we were adding was doubling each time. So how on earth do we fit this to a, to a function? Well, what I have down here in red is kind of like two ways of thinking about exponential um, structures. This first one I can almost generalize to just a times b to the x. No vertical shift. And the second one I can almost generalize a times b to the x, and then plus some k value, plus some vertical shift, or if we're subtracting something, maybe um, a shift in the downwards direction. And we've talked in class um, about how any horizontal shift can actually be absorbed into that coefficient, into the a value. So I don't have to worry about a horizontal shift for these. But from the tables, you'll notice we do have to worry about a vertical shift. So here I have two kind of ways of thinking about exponential um, equations, a times b to the x, or a times b to the x plus k. And you'll notice it's fairly simple to come up with the equation for the first type, for just a times b to the x. It's when we have that vertical shift that the table um, gets a little bit more complicated. So I'd like to investigate that one a little bit further. Let's make a table of values in general for a times b to the x plus our vertical shift, plus k. Let's see. And just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to stick with these inputs. So here's x and here's y. If I plug in 0, we get a times b to the 0 plus k. That's just a plus k. If I plug in 1, we get a times b to the first plus k. If I plug in 2, we get a times b squared plus k. And then we get a times b cubed plus k. I'm just trying to see if I can find some sort of pattern in general that I can apply to all exponential functions of this form. 
notice we always have that plus k on the end. So if I think about what we're adding each time, Um, that plus k is showing up each time, so it's not like we're adding, we're, it's not like we're changing, you know, the vertical shift ever. So what did I add to get from a plus k to ab plus k? We had to add an ab minus a, right? a plus ab minus a gave us that ab. I'm not worrying about the k's because those aren't changing each time. What did I add to ab plus k to get ab squared plus k? We had to add the AB squared and then subtract off the AB. And similarly for this last one, plus AB cubed minus AB squared. I'm just thinking about what did I add from one to get to the next. I'm just going to rewrite these expressions in purple by factoring out what I can. I'm just going to see what I can do to make it look a little bit friendlier. I'm going to factor out an A here. Let me get b minus 1. Here I can factor out an ab. Let me get b minus 1. Here I can factor out an ab squared. Let me get b minus 1. So that's really interesting. When we have this vertical shift happening, to go from one output to the next one up, we added some form of a times b to some power times b minus 1. And now let's look at the purple expressions on the right-hand side. What are the only differences from the first to the second? We just multiplied by b. From a b, b minus 1, to a b squared, b minus 1, we just multiplied by b. So what's interesting, it's the, what we're multiplying our differences by ends up being our b value. If you for, refer back to the previous slide, we notice that our differences were doubling and our b value was in fact 2. Let's do one concrete example of this to see if we can really see this structure in an example. Let's take this table. How about negative 4, 2, 26 and 122. The first thing I'd like to check for is does this fit in the form y equals a b to the x? Are we always multiplying by some number? Negative 4 times something giving us 2, 2 times something giving us 26. It's not always the same number. So that kind of easy version or easy possibility is gone. It doesn't look like y equals a b to the x. I can see that pretty quickly. What is happening here though? I can see that here we're adding 6. Here we're adding 24. And here we're adding 96. And so the first set of differences does have some sort of pattern. Here we're multiplying by 4 and multiplying by 4. Notice this is not the same structure as when we had just like polynomials and we're just looking at differences and differences. We're looking now at um, like uh, patterns involving addition and multiplication, so it's a little bit more complicated. Well, like we noticed before, what those differences were changing by, the factor that we were multiplying them by, is our b value. And we sort of proved that on the previous slide with our general example. So now I know b is equal to 4, and I know that I can write this in the form y equals a times b to the x plus k. I already ruled out that kind of easier possibility. So actually, I know that it's y equals a times 4 to the x plus k. And now it's just a matter of solving for a and solving for k. And we can do that by just plugging in what we know and generating a system of equations. Let's plug in the point 0, negative 4. And let's also plug in the point 1, 2. I can simplify these equations to get negative 4 equals a plus k and 2 equals 4a plus k. 
this should look super friendly. This is just a system of two linear equations. You can solve this however you want. I would like to actually just subtract one from the other right now. I'm just going to subtract these two equations. Just the setup, I think it's easiest to do that. Let me get negative 6 equals negative 3a. I picked subtracting them because I knew my k's would cancel. And we get that a is equal to positive 2. From plugging back in, we now can see that, let's see, 2 plus what number equals negative 4? And that would be negative 6. So it's getting a little crowded on the screen, but hopefully we can see that our final function is y equals a times b to the x plus k. I put in all the pieces, so it's off in the corner in blue. What we did was we recognized the structure in general, that we looked at how our differences were changing, and that told us our b value. And then I just really plugged in to find a and k, and I set up a system and solved. And that system ended up being kind of friendly, kind of nice. So in general, what to be on the lookout for? You want to be on the lookout for exponential functions of the form y equals a times b to the x, but you might also want to be on the lookout for exponential functions in the form y equals a times b to the x plus k, because that horizontal, I'm sorry, that vertical shift is sometimes making the table a little bit tricky. Good luck!